Welcome, my friends. With the release of Zamrock earlier this month, we have gotten quite a few melee buffs. Chaos Roar, a new melee ability that doubles the power of your next melee ability, and a brand new armor set. The Vestments of Havoc, which will be today's topic. Vestments have been a huge boon to melee as a whole, and I'm excited to show you all just how and why they upgrade melee even more and really do some damage. But before we begin, I would like to announce that all future voiced guides and such will have subtitles built into the video, starting with this one. Simply enable it through YouTube's built-in captions, and there you go. So without further ado, let's get this party started. These bad boys are quite a doozy. It has a lot of set effects that get added the more pieces you equip, but we'll push that to the side for now because their raw stats are very interesting. These are tier 95 armor that Jag says are tier 100 damage bonus. Actually, it's a bit better than that, because there's one small detail to them that makes them better. There are actually only 4 items instead of a full 5 with gloves missing, but to make up for it, all 4 items are marginally increased to make up for the lack of gloves, so you get tier 100 damage bonus with the full set without gloves, then you can add in a different glove for even more damage. As such, they end up a little bit better than advertised, which is very reminiscent of tier 92 power armor, where, as a side note, they actually end up being tier 96-ish damage bonus. Of course, there is a catch. In exchange, its armor is equal to tier 75 power armor. For direct comparison, it has equivalent armor to Barrow's armor, but without any damage reduction tank armor inherently has. So right off the bat, this is the ultimate glass cannon armor where it's kill or be killed taken to a whole new level. Bosses won't splash on you as much, so you'll end up taking more damage overall. As mentioned earlier, tier 92 power armor actually ends up to be around tier 96, so a bit of the jump between Trim Masterwork and Vestments of Havoc is smaller based on just that. But again, Vestments of Havoc having inherently higher stats than tier 100 due to lacking gloves can't be understated. If you directly compare the previous best slot setup with the current best slot setup right now, you would do around 1.4 to 1.5% more damage than Trim Masterwork. If you replace the Vestment Hood with Jaws of the Abyss, you will do around 1% more. Before you get worried, that's more than a jump from tier 90 to tier 92, and we haven't even talked about the set effects just quite yet. But on that note, you don't want to miss these set effects. All of them are very good. If you have two pieces, you will regain 15% adrenaline over 18 seconds after using a melee ultimate. If you use another ultimate during those 18 seconds, you get an instant 20% adrenaline refund, but immediately end the adrenaline over time effect. Keep in mind this only applies to melee ultimates like Berserk and Overpower, so defense and constitution ultimates like Natural Instinct or Barricade or, god forbid, Transfigure won't work. And on that note, Natural Instinct does not affect either adrenaline gains for investments. This set effect is of course really good as you constantly use ultimates over and over like Berserk and Overpower. Combined with the Jaws of the Abyss helmet, Melee has more adrenaline to work with than ever, and you could potentially add a Meteor Strike into a general rotation to further generate more crit adrenaline, although that adds an RNG that I'm not personally keen on introducing to my rotations. But it's not immediately a bad idea, and you may see it crop up in certain rotations. If you have 3 pieces, Berserk is extended from 20.4 seconds to 26.4 seconds, an increase by 6 seconds. This is self-explanatory, a longer Berserk is always very good, even if you'll have the 50% extra damage taken debuff for longer. With a longer duration, you can actually afford to fit in 1.5 destroys and 2 hurricanes in a single Berserk. Keep in mind that this is not always the most optimal way to carry out a Berserk, since that also involves delaying your smoke cloud, and some rotations either don't need that, or have better alternate rotations, like Karapak or Raksha. As a casual rotation though, it works out pretty well. If you have all 4 pieces, your maximum adrenaline goes up by 20%, so you can go from 100% maximum adrenaline to 120% maximum adrenaline, also self-explanatory. With heightened senses, you can actually get up to 130%, but there is currently no place for heightened senses in the current meta. Either way, having an extra 20% maximum adrenaline is pretty strong since you can start every encounter with an extra 20% adrenaline, and you can have more overflow adrenaline if you're going to be using basics near 100% adrenaline. 
All of these are really good and have immediate useful applications. But there's an elephant in the room. We already have other useful melee gear with other passes, most notably the Jaws of the Abyss helmet and Trim Masterwork. We'll talk about Trim Masterwork later when we go over the field tests because it's much more relevant there, but I want to talk about Jaws of the Abyss for now because the addition of vestments in its 4-piece set effect does add another switch for melee between the vestment hood and Jaws. Getting more adrenaline on basic starting bleeds is super good, while the extra 20% maximum adrenaline is a bit more conditional. As a rule of thumb, if you're going to switch between both Jaws and Vestments, you want to be at least below 92% adrenaline, or 91% adrenaline if you have Fear of the Small Relic on. If you want to go extra, you can equip Vestments where you either don't need the extra adrenaline, or for thresholds or ultimates to squeeze out a little bit more damage. If you don't care too much about switches and you just want to chill out, then simply swap to Jaws right after using Berserk and don't worry about mid-combat switching beyond that initial swap. The extra 20% max adrenaline is very nice, but I don't quite think 4 pieces is good enough to completely outweigh Jaws. There will be some rotations that absolutely require Jaws and Vestment switching, but for now, those should be relatively small potatoes and not be entirely required for just getting through a boss normally. But that covers the Vestment stats and set effect. Basically, what you see from the tooltips are what you get. Nothing too shocking or surprising aside from how the power armor bonus actually translates to raw numbers. Enough of that, however. It's time for the fun part. The field tests and slamming bosses to the ground. For these fuel tests, I have picked out two bosses perfect for putting vestments of havoc through its paces, Karapak and Telos. Both of these bosses hit really hard, and people have certainly thought that without Trim Master work, both of these bosses would be rough. Well fret not, as I'm here to put your fears to rest. Mostly. But let's talk about vestments being a glass cannon, which doesn't actually matter as much. First up the chopping block is Karapak. Now, P1 to P3 is easy to the point where you can just camp Soul Split the entire fight and he can't even KO you, so long as you properly escape the jumps and do the rift skip. Still, it is worth mentioning a lot of the benefits you can get here. A longer Berserk obviously speaks for itself to allow more damage, but the adrenaline refunds and extra 20% max adrenaline are actually also worth mentioning. The adrenaline refunds add more adrenaline to your rotation to use more thresholds mid Berserk, and the extra 20% maximum adrenaline allows you to fit in Assault, Hurricane, and Destroy all in one warp time, even if you are only at 108% or so. Previously, you'd only be able to use a 188% ability instead of Hurricane, so this is a DPS increase that's directly caused by the increased maximum adrenaline. It's P4 that has always been a bit of a rough patch, but even still, melee has always done fairly okay on P4. But that was with Trim Masterwork to help reduce KO potential, right? As a refresher, Trim Masterwork's set effect is damage offset. With a minimum of 3 pieces equipped to all 5 pieces, you can quote unquote soak up damage and have that damage offset it to happen later, from 30% with 3 pieces, 40% with 4 pieces, or 50% with all 5 pieces. But this is not true damage soaking, contrary to what some people may think you are still taking the same damage overall. What this actually does is help reduce KO potential of big hits so you can out-eat or out soul split the damage, making it less punishing even though you are taking the same overall damage. This makes high damaging bosses more beginner friendly since if it can't outright KO you, it is easier to live and not get outright stacked. P4 Careback is much different from P1 to P3 with much more damage taken overall. But even despite the longer Berserk and lack of damage offset from Trim Masterwork, I will actually argue it is safer to use Vestments of Havoc over Trim Masterwork now. Here's why. The Adrenaline Refund from 2 piece effect will allow you just enough time to fit in Assault, Hurricane, and Devotion within warp time. With Trim Masterwork, you literally cannot use Devotion unless you get a Relentless proc, which you should never rely on. 
So you should be fitting in devotion right before your warp time ends, which leads you to kill the first echo to get the first devotion extension. Then you move all the way to the second echo, kill that one with a full assault, destroy, and hurricane to get your next devotion extension. This alone helps make getting to the third echo much safer, which will slap you hard even with trim masterwork. Not to mention, the longer berserk makes echo 2 easier as well because you don't have to gamble on only 3 destroy hits or even completely skip out on destroy due to bad RNG on Echo 1. You can just fully channel all 4 destroy hits to ensure it will die. You also get some leftover berserk time on Echo 3, lowering health by quite a bit which makes that go by quicker and or easier, then devotion will carry you for the rest of the fight and you can eat and use the strapping shield as needed. Oh, and once again, a longer Berserk will allow you to kill both Echo 3 and Karapak himself within that entire Berserk. So you can basically spend the entirety of P4 within Berserk, something you cannot do with Trim Masterwork. All of these factors combined easily put investments over Trim Masterwork any day of the week at Karapak. Even in terms of safety and if you're not perfect, I still think Trim Masterwork is obsolete here because with a similar amount of mistakes, Trim Masterwork won't have saved you anyways. You also don't even need to switch back and forth between Jaw of the Abyss and Vestment Hood for P4. You can just camp Vestments. Now for Telos. We've already established that Karapak, despite being a dangerous hard-hitting boss, is still overall better using Vestments due to set effects favoring more damage and allowing more adrenaline to allow key defensives. However, Telos is a different boss altogether. In fact, this is the one boss where Trim Masterwork shines the most, for a couple of reasons. Number 1. Higher armor value compared to Vestments actually matters a ton. Both Tells and Golems actually splash a non-trivial amount of times, so losing out on any bit of armor will hurt quite a lot. Number 2. Telos is very stun heavy at the start of phases, and offset of damage is paused in the middle of phase transitions. If you get hit hard that will normally KO you on vestments but wouldn't on Trim Masterwork right before that phase transition, you can end up on the next phase, soul split all your health back while stunning, and move on without touching a single piece of food or dying because you'll be stunning Tell so hard he won't be able to attack. This is where damage offset actually does matter. Number 3. Remember how I said earlier where damage offset doesn't actually reduce damage? Well here's a rare exception where that does actually happen. At the end of P4 going into P5, all offset of damage is immediately deleted. If you were to do Fast Fawn 3 on P4 using Trim Masterwork, having all that offset of damage deleted helps a lot when going into the next phase. And finally, P5 is where Trim Masterwork shines the most. Since Barricade blocks offset of damage, you actually have a lot more leeway getting hit before you use Barricade. With all that in mind, Trim Masterwork certainly does have a lot of upsides that actually makes a big difference, and it's probably the one boss on the top end where it won't necessarily be a terrible idea to still use. But Vestments can still pull through with really good positives that can change Melee Tells quite a bit. Now, a lot of what makes Melee Telos better nowadays is also due to Chaos Roar, and going in depth with that deserves its own separate discussion. That being said, let's go over the full list of improvements Vestments bring to the table. First off, the extra 20% max adrenaline when starting every kill is a major improvement, allowing more flexibility on P1 to use previously inaccessible abilities earlier due to your adrenaline concerns, like Hurricane. It also allows more flexibility going from P3 to P4, so you can more reliably use greater bars to destroy, to overpower, to Sadius' Warhammer spec, then quickly go to the first font. And during P4 itself, you come out of font 1 with more adrenaline than normal, so you can actually barricade font 2 to save a ton of food there, instead of simply out eating font 2 like you used to do with your mass work. And on font 3, you can start P5 on a nicer foot due to that higher adrenaline cap. Finally, on P5, with 120% max adrenaline, you can instantly use Berserk, then Barricade without any waiting. Currently, this has not been used in any P5 rotation thus far, but I already have personal ideas to take full advantage of it. But not only that, it makes Granite Maul rotations even easier to use on P5, with more adrenaline to play around with. The adrenaline refund from Ultimate speak for themselves by this point. Being funneled more and more adrenaline every time you use overpower is super helpful across any phase, no matter what. 
from P1 to P2, to P2 to P3, to P4 beginning to Font 1, getting free adrenaline is always a boon. Unfortunately, the longer Berserk is currently not terribly useful. You already killed P5 Telos before the 20% Berserk ran out, so you don't really gain anything there. Berserk P1 might be okay to force Telos into P2 quickly and just get Tendrils then, but I haven't personally tested that out just yet. The only other option where Berserk might be good is P3, but this is currently a mixed bag and uncertain whenever or not it is good. Currently, P3 has two problems right now. Perfect P1s and P2s in the same kill ruin optimal cooldowns for P3, that being for Slaughter, and it's also incredibly slow compared to both ranged and magic. Berserk P3 could solve both issues, but then we run into another problem, adrenaline drains if Berserk isn't fast enough, which can happen sometimes. Current P3s rely on Telos staying in the red beam long enough so Telos neither does a nuke nor drains adrenaline at all, but this safer strategy prolongs P3 a bit too long than I'd like. That being said, there is currently another problem with Berserk P3 that actually has potential to be solved, not even staying in the red beam due to distance problems most of the time. This could potentially be fixed and render this entire musing pointless or outdated, but it's still interesting to think about. I have ideas on fixing this issue, but we'll just have to see. One incredibly funny thing is that Berserk lasts for so long, if you're lucky you can actually have it carry over to P4 and do some huge damage. Now all of this doesn't completely take away from the overall danger vestments have. In fact, even though vestments do speed up kill times, it currently comes at such a higher risk that I'm not sure I can currently recommend as wholeheartedly as I did with Karapak. You take noticeably more damage, especially on P5 which can instantly KO you so much more easily compared to Trim Masterwork. That being said, things can very rapidly change, and maybe there will be improved rotation that also help reduce the risk as well. Perhaps using the Votion on P3 with Berserk could be an answer, for example. Telos is the boss with the most arguments for still using Trim Masterwork, but even then, there are still good uses for investments here that I'm very confident will eventually just completely overtake Trim Masterwork with better rotations and strategies. Karapak and Telos are the two main bosses I really want to highlight in this video, due to being quite dangerous overall for melee at a first glance. All the other bosses like Raksha or Elite Dungeons would go as you expect. More DPS from both the extra damage boost and set effects, bosses don't hit hard enough to properly punish the lower armor and no damage offset, etc. It also wouldn't fundamentally change bosses with melee just unusable or close to it, like Rise of the Six or Zuck, but it'll certainly help bosses where melee is kinda meh, like ED2 or Arc Glacor. But my point is, Vestments of Havoc equals big damage, Trim work goes back into the closet. There's really not much more than that. It's basically a direct upgrade from Trim work at every single boss except Telos, and even that is shaky at best, and could very well be improved in multiple ways that further kicks down Trim Masterwork. I would wholeheartedly recommend this to any dedicated melee user without any hesitation. It's not super game-breakingly OP, it won't suddenly make melee meta over magic, but it's a very welcome power boost that also opens up a lot of options in combat, with no RNG whatsoever. That covers it for this video. If you like this video, please drop a like and comment, and share the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time everybody, bye!